Hello, Will. Thanks so much for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm um, good. Thanks, Chris. How are you doing? I am fantastic, and I'm so excited that we get to talk about the status <laughs> game. I've been I've been waiting. I've been waiting for a book like yours to come out. But before we dive into some of the topics from the book, can you kind of explain what inspired this specific book? Like you talk about, it was kind of a combination of a couple other books you worked on. So can you talk about why you want to write this? Yeah, so the last last sort of two, three books I've written have been really, you know, the, the central idea is, has been like, you know, we experience life as this story and, it, and it's the kind of a made up thing, you know, like so, so um, that's why well, we can be so irrational because the, the, the brain is this kind of hero maker that tells this heroic story about the world um, and it's distorted and it's biased and all that stuff. But then, you know, so it begs the question, if, if, if the illusion is a story, what's the truth? What, what's actually are we doing yeah. as we go about the human life? And I think the answer is those two things is connection and status. That's, that's what we want. We want to connect into little into games Mm -hmm. And once we're connected, we want to earn status within them. And, um, you know, once I kind of saw that, I, I, I um, you, you, still, you just see it everywhere. It's, it's human yeah. life, you know, religion, politics, sports, um, corporations, mm -hmm. online, you know, it's everywhere. It's what we do. It, it's, it's, what we, it's, what we, it's what all humans are constantly doing is joining groups and playing for status. So, so yeah, I thought that, that yeah, it just, well, as soon as I kind of saw that, I, I thought, well, yeah, this, this, I really want to sort of think more about this. Yeah, yeah, like that's that's why I was so excited when I I saw that you wrote this book because I'm I'm personally, you know, I'm always looking for like the root, like where, like where, when I see like an issue or some weird human behavior, I'm like, okay, well, what's underneath that, yes. and what's underneath that, right? <laughs> and I think you know why I got interested in this whole idea of status was, you know. Um, I'm a recovering drug addict and it was from my depression. And I looked at a lot of my depression and things like that. And a lot of it was my comparison to other people. You know what I mean? And when I got sober in 2012 and I started working with other people, I started looking around and I saw that a lot of like depression, anxiety, and just like overall human suffering seemed to come from us constantly chasing status. You yeah. know what I mean? So have, did you kind of, have you kind of seen that? Like you touch on a few, like, uh, well, quite a few uh, things like in everyday life, but, but how do you think this is affecting people on a, on a daily basis with, with the status? Well, it's everywhere and, it, and it's everything, you know, it, it's, it, well, I mean, it's not everything, it, but, but, it, but it is everywhere. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's interesting that, you know, you mentioned your own background, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, an alcoholic, or, you know, I haven't had a drink for 20 years. Nice. I, I, used to take, I used to take a lot of drugs when I was young. And, and so I can totally relate to, mm. you know, to, to where that's coming from. And, and, and especially, you know, in terms of mental health, you know, very often that you see when people are really suffering, even up to and including kind of suicidal ideation, you know, not always, but often the, the problem is, it's connected with status. You know, you, you feel that you're failing in life and you uh, and not only do you feel that you're failing in life, you feel that it's hopeless, that you've tried everything and the, mm -hmm. and the game is going to, it keeps throwing you out and, 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 and you're at the bottom and, and that's that. And, and, and so um, what, what researchers find is that it is, is the risk of, you know, suicide um, and suicidal thoughts, um, you know, seriously increases when people, especially when people suddenly lose status. So when they're oh, yeah. here and then they're suddenly down there. Um, but interestingly, interestingly, uh, another um, uh, flash point, danger point is, is, is when people simply are, are left behind, when they feel that everybody else has kind of accelerated ahead and they're just still less kind of stuck there. Mm -hmm. That also is, is, is um, uh, linked to uh, increased risk of, of suicide. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, the way I see status is it, it, it's, um, you know, it's a fundamental human need, like food and water is a fundamental human need, but it's a psychological need. Yeah. Um, and, and, and when people feel that they're, that they're being unfairly deprived of status, they get, they get depressed and they get sad, but they also get really, really angry. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, 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 and you know, that, 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 that's the thing that we see more often, I think, especially at the moment in the world. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, uh, I, I notice a lot, you know, especially when people are unemployed, like you said, when, when your status drops, 
right? Yeah. Like during my addiction, I, I don't know about you, but I lost so many jobs, just so many jobs. <laughs> and when I was a new father, you know what I mean? Uh, it was actually in 2008 when the recession hit, lost my yeah. job. And even then, like, it just felt terrible. I'm not as good as other people. I'm not able to provide and all these other things. And so much of it is just thinking about what others are thinking of me, right? And just like that, that sense of security. But like you said, too, like, it, it's interesting that there's like these two primary emotions, there's like the depression, and sometimes it's like this helplessness. But then also, it's this, it's this anger, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the United States, you know, what we've seen all these, you know, protests and just so much stuff going on, right? And uh, I'm not as familiar with all the stuff going on in the UK. But how much do you think it's from this, you know, people don't feel like they're able to get to the status level that they they want to be at or deserve to be at? How do you think that's playing into it? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, again, very frequently when you see groups um, entering into conflict with with other groups, that it, you know, it's to do with status, and 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 that you know that that goes back all through human history, and and I do think there's a lot of that underlying the kind of you know what we call the culture wars at the moment. Yeah, what you see on the one one side is that is um, you know white working class, white lower middle class people who who um, you know perhaps in the in the sixties and before we, we you know had status they were doing you know they, 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 they had relatively more money than they have now they had more respect mm -hmm. than they have now they were the you know uh, the backbone of america or the you know the salt of the earth and uh, the, uh, over here and and um you know since the age of um um you know multiculturalism has arisen and you know it, it, over here the the problem is um it's not a problem but the, the you know the flashpoint is immigration you know mm -hmm. to immigration after the second world war you guys there's the you know the well-known kind of race issues and and i think you know part of what's happened is a genuine decline in status mm -hmm. uh, for white working class people and white low middle class people um in terms of um uh, well it's a genuine it's just a decline in terms of you know uh income uh, but also um just the level of respect they're afforded um generally um uh, 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 as the kind of focus of the left especially has moved on to minority groups for lots of very good reasons um the white working class white liberal class feel abandoned they feel disrespected and you know they get angry about that yeah. uh, and you know they make a lot of mistakes i mean and, and the, the most obvious one is that they blame the immigrants they blame african americans yeah. uh, which is the wrong you know it is the, the wrong target but but that's that, that's who they see as responsible for this um, and then on the other side you've got um you, you've got uh you know very um uh, privileged um mm. educated people um who um have also, you know, seen a relative decline in in status in the sense that, um, so 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 when um, uh, researchers look at the uh, exactly who are the people who um, are um, kind of fighting these culture wars on the left, mm -hmm. find some really interesting things. You know, there there are a minority of people. I think it's thirteen percent in the UK, eight percent in the US. Um, they are out of sort of about seven different demographic groups they're the they're the, they're the wealthiest so they've got the mm -hmm. most um family incomes over fifty thousand um pounds over here uh, they're the high, most highly educated um and um they're, they're the most dominant voice on social media so in the uk this group of people may uh, make more contributions to social media than the rest of the nation combined oh wow even though they're only 13 <laughs> percent yeah. so, so so they're the ones on twitter uh, you know they're the ones um shouting um, and um, about racism and social justice and so on, uh, uh, but, uh, but many of these people, I mean, they also skew, they also skew heavily Gen Z and millennial. Mm. And the, inter the interesting thing about wealthy, highly educated Gen Z and millennials is that they are also suffering a decline in status compared to um, mm. what has gone before. You know, famously, they you know, it's much harder to get the property ladder. Um, it's much harder to um, uh, to they, they're earning a lot less money than their parents mm -hmm. um, earned at the same stage. So 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 you know 
I don't think it's, uh, you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I don't think it's a coincidence that in both of these groups, in these kind of angry left-wing activists and angry white working class kind of yeah. pro-Trump, anti-EU people have both seen a decline in relative status, uh, you know, uh, uh, over the last few years. I, I don't think that's a coincidence at all. Um, uh, you, you know, it's not just that, but but I think that's a big part of the uh, picture. Yeah, it's it's so crazy as I as I look out at the you know at the landscape of how people are behaving just because I'm just constantly fascinated by human behavior. I I, I see all these people fighting and and kind of like what you're saying. I'm like everybody's kind of dealing with the same thing, right? Yeah. And it's just how we're perceiving it. And by chance, have you have you read the book Strangers in Their Own Land from uh what's her name Arlie Hothschild? Hotchild? I don't know how to say her name. Have no, that that's a new one. That's a new one on me. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you ever get the chance, so basically like she's, she's like this liberal woman, uh, I believe she's a sociologist or something. And mm -hmm. she's from like the, you know, one of the coastal places in the United States, but she wanted to go to the middle, middle of America and say, what, what's going on, right? Why mm -hmm. do you guys disagree yeah. so much? And she wanted yeah. to understand. And yeah, you go there and they're dealing with a lot of the same things. And they, you know, it, it helped me kind of widen it and my, widen my perspective and understand like, oh, these people feel like they're being left behind, right? But then you mm -hmm. have other people, you know, uh, like you mentioned, like, you know, millennials, Generation Z and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, who also feel left behind, right? And I've mm -hmm. been really interested in books lately that kind of explain, uh, or just have different opinions on the culture wars and how, you know, uh, they're 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 making us fight left versus right when there's really we're upset about the top versus the bottom. You know yeah. what I mean? Do you feel like a lot of people are distracted <laughs> by that? Yeah, well, yeah, and I, I, and I think that's the mistake they make. And I think what was really interesting for me um, is understanding the two different stories that they tell about the world. Mm. And, and they're both stories about status, as these things very often are. And, and what the kind of, you know, progressive activists online, you might call, you know, they're often known as woke people. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the story that they tell of the world is that, is, that, is that white people, especially white men, especially straight white men, have un unfairly dominate the world and unfairly kind of hoard resources and 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 fix mm -hmm. the game so everyone else is kind of screwed. But then, if you look on the other the, the other kind of story that 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 you know you're a Trump voter or over here a Brexit voter might believe is that is that it's not it's un it's the highly educated who um are who unfairly dominate the game and yeah. fix it so everybody else is kind of screwed. And what you know. I think I think the broad point, you know, I think if there's one kind of thing I've learned from the last few books is that stories are never true, you know, and, mm. and, 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 and usually it's not that they're complete outright fabrications, it's that they kind of hold half the truth. And what's interesting about those two stories is that white people, you know, fix the game on their and men do, and and so do highly educated people. It's all true. It's all yeah. true. <laughs> all those things are true. Um, but 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 each side only sees their half of the truth. So you get mm -hmm. these extraordinary scenes where, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, a left wing journalist on Twitter that I kind of write about is is, is kind of you know literally contemptuously disparaging oh, yeah. um, white working class people who worked in a, a chicken processing couple of all things right. and, and, and complain that they have all the advantages and they're still whining about earning $13 an hour. And this, this woman has been to, you know, has been to elite um, college after elite mm. college. She writes for, you know, um, uh, um, the Washington Post and, and, uh, and, and, you know, so she's, uh, she, she is right at the top of the game. Yeah completely bathing in privilege <laughs> and yet <laughs> she, yeah, she doesn't feel like it she feels like she's a kind of a plucky uh you know um uh brave uh i don't know you know yeah. person who feels morally um uh, entitled to, to 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 accuse these chicken factory workers of being yeah. of being of having all the privileges and it's like man you know it, it, it's yeah it's it, it, it's a really fucked up situation but but, but it's because people that's the thing we believe the story the brain tells us and the story always holds about half the truth if not yeah. less yeah it's it's something like it like every time this like this topic kind of comes up i i just start to feel the frustration inside myself because <laughs> it feels like just such an obvious sleight of hand trick yeah. right it's like someone just like sitting there with a pile of money 
and just <laughs> holding it all for themselves and saying, look at, look at that, look at that guy over there. He's, he's the reason you're in trouble. And, and people are like, yeah. yeah, you're right. And I'm like, do you guys do, do, do we not see this? How can we not see this? Cause it's like, they're just playing us like a fill, you know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, and yeah. And I think, you know, I think one of the best things, I would love if you could explain this study that you touch on in the book, because I think it really helps people understand how, how much we value status. So there was a study uh, where they, they like offered employees and said, would you rather have a promotion to raise your status or like a pay raise or mm. something like that? Do you That's remember? Right, yeah. yeah. Can you, can you kind of break yeah, down like, yeah. what that they, study they, they, they just straight out ask people, um, what would you prefer a pay rise or, or, or a better job title? And, and about 70% opted for the, for, for the better job title. So you know, <laughs> finding, a finding clerk wanted to be a data storage specialist and, you know, this, that, yeah. And that. yeah. And that just shows, I mean, you know, like I, I, I the, the way, it, you know the way to understand these status games is that it's like any game is is, is that is that we we use symbolic things to mm-hmm. measure status and you know if we're playing if we're playing monopoly it's a it's a plastic hotel but but you know in, in this day and age money is is a way that we use to symbolize status um and, mm-hmm. but it's not the only it's not the only way it's just a, it's just another way of playing the status game um mm-hmm. uh, you know job title is 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 also it's very clearly about status so so, so people often um, opt for the for, for the um, improved status and 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 for good reason you know it's, it's probably going to make them happier than the money is mm-hmm. um, it, within certain limits obviously yeah it's it, like the two primary things I, I often think of uh, think about that like are these driving forces of us is like status and and signaling right and I'll never forget one time I was in uh, Los Angeles, and I think I got lost and wasn't in the best neighborhood, right? But like these houses, they were, you know, they were, it wasn't the best neighborhood, but the cars were nice, right? <laughs> they're that yeah. such nice cars. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that, that, you know, that might be beneficial for them because they're signaling to people like, hey, my potential status is this. But, you know, um, I have a 12 year old son, and it's something I'm trying to teach him, uh, you know, because he gets an allowance and stuff. And he wants to buy like in game cosmetics for Fortnite and all that. And I have him stop and think like why do you want that right because i want him to start recognizing are yeah. you trying to signal a certain status or you know yeah. is that going to bring your true happiness but but yeah um i i again i love getting down to the root and we evolve this way and you you cover it just excellently in the book but can you kind of give an overview of like why it was beneficial for us to even care about status like back yeah. in our ancestor days Totally, yeah. So it's it's basically the way that we've we've solved the problems of survival and reproduction. You know, it's mm. that it's that it's that fundamental. And and so as you might know, we you know we're apes. Humans are apes. Yeah. But, but we're but we're apes that have cracked the you know the secret of being highly social. So Jonathan Haidt, the famous um, psychologist, says that we're part ape, part B. You know, we're mm-hmm. that we're that social. And so and so. You know what we do is 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 we in our in our troops in our in 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 our groups. We, we, we sort of master the art of dividing um, mm. um, uh, responsibility for tasks with each other and working together, cooperating. Um, obviously, you know, language being a big part of that. Um, so, 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 that's, so, that's how, that, so that's how we did it. You know, we, you know we did, in order to survive and reproduce, we connect into these groups. Um, but it's more than just about connection. It's uh, because you know we, 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 it's it's fine to feel connected into a group, and, and, and we're driven by evolution to feel good when we're successfully yeah. connected into a group, and to fear being ostracised from a group. But once we're in that group, we're not we're not uh, you know we're not really happy to just flop around on the lower rungs. You know, yeah. everyone likes me, but I'm a bit of a loser. You know, that, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. not people aren't happy with that. And, and so, uh, so you know, we we we've evolved this kind of urge to want to move up, to be res- to, to be respected, and to feel above other people. And that's because, um, you know, being connected into a group solves the very basic problems of survival and reproduction. But if you want to really thrive, you had to earn status because in any hu- in the human tribes in which we evolved, the more status that you earned, the better food you got the better your access to your chosen mates, mm. uh, the safer your sleeping sites, the better the opportunities for your children even. So, so the more status that you had, the better you were surviving and reproducing. So it's, a, it's that fundamental. 
Um, and, and of course, you, you know, you still see that today. You know, that was true 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, when, our, when all this circuitry was evolving and, and longer. And it's still true today. The more status you have in the modern world in the West, the better able you are to provide for your children, the better schools they go to, the better universities mm -hmm. they go to. So it's still the same old game that we're playing. Yeah. And, 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 and as you know, if you just didn't get into the root, that really is the root, you know, connection and status. That, that, that's what we're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah it's 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 interesting because i feel i feel like when uh you know i talk about this because i just love i love evolutionary psychology so much but it feels like when i talk when i talk about this like it seems like it's like this kind of like cliche like hey we're just these like old school tribalistic <laughs> apes and we haven't really caught up but it's like it's so true we're doing yeah. these these ancient behaviors that helped us and and i think you know there's there's this weird balance of finding like okay this is part of how we evolved and there was a, a pretty good reason since we're at the top of the food chain right yeah, but yeah. some of it we kind of gotta you know recognize it and balance it out because not all of them are as advantageous in 2021 as they were back in like bc you know what i yeah, mean yeah i i think the main one is the main thing is really is that we evolved to play these small games mm. you know we evolved in, the, in relatively small groups and even within those small groups your games are divided. So the genders would have been pretty much divided. Women would compete with women, men would compete with men. Mm -hmm. and, and in that, you know, is is down to age and and um you know hunters would compete with hunters, honey finders would compete with honey finders, you know, so so so, so you're playing these very small games and um you know, and they were so shallow that they, it's often people you hear talk about um these human groups involved in as being egalitarian, but they mm -hmm. weren't egalitarian in the sense that everybody nobody was interested in status they were egalitarian because everybody was very very fucking interested in status yeah and yeah. and they were con and, and they're constantly kind of managing each other and pushing each other down making sure nobody starts throwing their weight around so they're egalitarian because because everyone's all constantly shuffling to get up to get the better resources you know um so so yeah so we've evolved to play these small games and and, and the big difference is now of course we play these massive gigantic games you know across the world uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, with it, have thousands, tens of thousands of other people playing it. So we're kind of driven mad by it. You know, we're driven mad by it in the sense that the, the status rewards on offer in, in today are insane compared to what they were in the groups we evolved yeah. with. You know, our, our, our brains are designed to play these small games. Yeah. But, and, and, and but today, they, you know, the rewards on offer, but, that, but and the downsides, that means the resentments that they trigger mm. are much, much bigger than they would have been otherwise. You know, people would have been held in check back in the day, yeah. but today they're not. And so, 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 so the, the, you know, the resentments that we've that we've evolved to experience in order that nobody gets too big over us just go crazy in the modern world. Huh. We, you, know, we get very, yeah. you know, much more envious than we would be. Uh, you know, I think we evolved. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, I, I, as you as you talk about that, like, I think that's just such an excellent point because you know they they talk about like Dunbar's number, right? Like 150 yeah, people. Exactly. That's like the yes. max relationships. So you think yeah. about these old school tribes, and you just kind of had to worry about a small group of people. Yeah. But then, but then you know, like even in just you know the industrial revolution, it's like, all right, now we're in these factories, and I got to worry about yeah. my status compared yeah. to this guy, right? And or yeah. you're in a small town, and like, are you better than the the blacksmith down the road, right? Mm -hmm. But then like. With with the internet, like for example, you're a writer, you're a journalist, like oh, you're yeah. you're competing with every other author on the yeah. planet. And every time we touch, yeah. every time we touch Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, <laughs> we're competing. It's it's this huge competition, and and status is like is it's all over the place. But like you mentioned, like the resentments we 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 get and all that kind of stuff. And I'm curious, cause you you touched on it uh, a minute ago, but like, what are some of the the key differences you see or you learned about through your research between men and women and how we kind of fight for status without broad generalizations and all that, but just kind of the evolution of your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, that, you know, it, 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 there are differences. Um, you know, the, the main caveat uh, would be to say that, 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 you know, we now know that men and women aren't categorically different. Uh, you know, th th there's huge overlap. So, 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 yeah. so you're all, you're always talking about generalizations. You're always talking about, you know, mm. if you take lots of men and lots of women and compare them together, you get these rough, you get these rough differences. And so, there, but, but there are some differences. And the most obvious one is is, is in in terms of physical violence. Mm. So the most, the, you know, the, the most basic way you play for status is with dominance. It's called, you know, mm. and so, and you know, it's much more, it's much more typical in the animal sphere. 
you know, when chickens meet and they peck at each other until the pecking order is established, that's dominance. So dominance is about forcing status from people, either physically or, or by threat. Mm. And so um, um, men play kind of physical dominance games, you know, far more often than women do. You know, we're still built physically. Even mm-hmm. today, we're still built physically, you know, with upper body muscular strength to fight physical one on one dominance games. So 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 it's embedded in us. But, you know, women are aggressive too. women also play dominance games, but, mm-hmm. but female because women don't tend to fight um, physically anywhere near as much as men. Um, they use the, the, these other games, which is about, you know, destroying people's reputation, um, mm-hmm. ostracization, reputation destruction. Um, the literature is very mixed. So, 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 so when you read some papers, they say that the that, that reputation destruction is very much the, the female form of aggression. Uh, so mm-hmm. if toxic masculinity is, you know, is physical aggression and, and, and one-on-one bullying, toxic femininity is reputation destruction. Yeah. Other papers just, just as, just as confident, confidently announced that that's not true um, and that, that, that men use reputation destruction just as much. So I don't really know what the truth is. But certainly, um, you know, men obviously use reputation destruction too. Um, uh, but, 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 you know, I, anybody that spent more than 10 minutes online can see <laughs> that, can, can see that, um, that, 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 that women are very good at dominance, and, 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 you know, at least as good as, I would say, as, yeah. as dominance through reputation destruction and ostracization. Yeah, as men. So, so that's one of the, that, that's, that, that, that's the most obvious is in the aggression styles. The, 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 another bigger difference um, that, that, that's sort of very well kind of um, established is, is, is this idea that we're, we're drawn to different kinds of games. Mm. Um, uh, and, and this is all around the world, in, you know, in, in, cross culturally, uh, men are more likely to, to, to be to have interests involving things and women interests involving people. Mm. And so, 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 so that very basic, broad, general difference reflects in the kinds of part, you know, jobs and, and vocations people join. So, mm. so, so, you know, if, you, if you're going to open a tractor factory tomorrow, it's more likely that, that, that when you advertise for jobs in the tractor factory, it's likely you're going to get more male applicants than women applicants. And it's, it's, and it's likely that more, you know, that that's, yeah, that, that gender difference will reflect in your, um, uh, your, your, your staff. And it won't be because you're a sexist monster. It'll be because, yeah. you know, <laughs> because, because of this general difference. You know, what, 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 you know, what is argued about is the source of that difference. So a feminist will say, well, um, the reason you've got more men um, in the tractor factory than women um, is because um, w- women are told from an early age, you're not allowed to be uh, uh, interested in tractors, you've got to be interested in cooking or something. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas a, you know, an evolutionary psychologist might say, well, actually it's more to do with um, millions of years of um, division of labor um, you know, women were, had to give birth, so they have a psychology that's more interested in other people and empathetic things. But you know, the, 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 this is an argument that was going to go on and on and on forever because um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, because of the status involved in it. You know, because of the status under, under you know at its core, and any any row that's to do with sta- people's status is is it has the capacity to become incredibly toxic incredibly quickly i mean people have been fired for for, for, for making these arguments so. yeah yeah no when you were talking about that i was thinking about the james damore situation exactly. from yeah. yeah and uh it's interesting because i've recently been reading some books on you know the trans debate and i read carol hooven's book on testosterone and i i i've been thinking you know just just like with how slow evolution is i just wonder if thousands from, of years from now if things will look different just because of the cultural changes you know what I mean? So now, you know, since, you know, women don't have to necessarily yeah. stay at home or gather and stuff. And I was talking with, uh, I believe, David Buss about, you know, a lot of women around my age, you know, or even within this group, I've noticed a lot of them not, just not wanting to have kids, right? So I'm yeah. like, how's that going to shift? But it's funny, too, uh, when you when you mentioned the, the kind of reputation stuff. Uh, when I got, when I had the internet coming after me in 2019, I got so interested in why we gossip. Like, why do we talk trash about each other? Why are there these mobs online? And why do people do this? And why do people care? And, you know, it, 
it all goes back to status, right? Like the person gossiping is saying, I have information about other people in the group, about who you should interact with, who's good, who's bad, right? So you're showing status with gossip. And, and that's why, like, that's just reason number 9,000 why I love your book, because it touches <laughs> on all these things. And I just want to like tell everybody, like, it's all about status. But when we're talking about the, the reputation, one of the things you touched on in the book, which I was like, yes, was... Uh, going back to, you know, men and their status is you talked about embarrassment and humiliation and you touch on like serial killers. And here in the States, I also think about mass shooters, right? Yeah, when I look yeah. at these stories of mass shooters, I think, you know, uh, uh, you know, humiliation. And like, whenever you look at the backstory, it was never like this guy, this guy was dating a lot of women, you know, he had a nice car and everything like that. And didn't want to kill him. <laughs> it's never like that, right? Yeah, it's never American psycho, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so can you can you kind of explain what you found in the research about like, just how humiliation plays into our drop in status and, and why people turn to violence when that happens? Yeah, this was really, really early when I was still wondering whether to, to write a book about this. I, mm. One of the little tests I gave myself was, OK, if you think that status is such a fundamental human need, then it must be really bad when we, it's taken away from us. So let's work out if it is or not and what happens. Mm. And so, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I came across this paper that I, could, I think it's just called Humiliation and its Causes. And the way that they, these psychologists just d d define humiliation is... Um, it's the removal of a person's status to such a degree that it's impossible for them to claim status in the future. So they're kicked out of their game from my perspective. You know, so they're, they're expelled from their status game. And, and, and then when you look around the, the, the literature, you know, my God, humiliation is connected to, 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 to mm -hmm. so much unbelievable evil. Everything from honor killings to serial killings mm -hmm. to, as you, said, you know, incel murders. Um, yeah, so, 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 so and, and that's what I thought, you know, I, I believe this now, <laughs> you know, but, you know, that, that, that's what really convinced me finally that status was as important as people were saying, because when you look at the humiliation literature, it's just, you, you know, and even uh, as I go in later on the book, when you look at the, the, the massive evil movements in history, most obviously the Nazis, the humiliation yeah. suffered after the after the First World War and the Treaty of Versailles, and they blame the Jews, so that, you know the Jews get it in the neck, you know. It, I, I, and so one of the interesting things to be one, I, I, I looked in depth at the story of Elliot Rogers, who is the um, University of um, California Santa Barbara, yeah. because he left a really detailed autobiography behind a hundred and eight thousand word kind of yeah. memoir essentially that was unsparing in its or, or honesty did you read the whole thing i did yeah oh, i wow. found it weirdly gripping yeah it was just unbelievable because because he was so um devastatingly honest and, and he and it was like and it wasn't yeah it's, it's, it's what struck me about Elliot rogers was that he was clearly a narcissist Mm -hmm. so, 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 so I think the most dangerous people aren't that aren't isn't just like you and me, you know, when we're humiliated and, and yeah, in that moment we might be dangerous. If somebody humiliates us, we might lash out. We might do something we really regret, especially if we, you know, drunk or on drugs. Yeah. But, but the really dangerous people are the narcissists because the people who are very grandiose, they're the ones who automatically assume they're up here and they deserve to be up here. Yeah. And if you take those people and you and you destroy them and you humiliate them again and again and again, they become extremely. Um, dangerous and you see this with Elliot Rogers you know very grandiose sort of not definitely I mean I would say narcissistic person you know he, he, he really does describe himself as a, as a, as a uh, you know beautiful cultured intelligent gentleman yeah. kind of thing um, and, but, and yet he was just bullied like insanely all throughout his childhood uh, no uh, once he hit he, he hit puberty before puberty he was happy but as soon as he, he started showing an interest in girls and realizing that girls didn't like him very much, mm -hmm. he became tortured by this. And, um, and yeah, he, he, you know, he, he becomes obsessed with the fact that the, 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 the pretty girls that he desires don't, won't go anywhere near him. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 he alienates all what friends he does have and ends up entirely alone and rejected. And there's a very actually touching 
thing in the in his book where where he the only thing he, he that brings him happiness is the, is the computer game world of warcraft mm-hmm. and he would he would he would meet up with some friends his remaining friends and play it all night and then he found out somehow that that, that, that his friends had started meeting up without him uh. to play world of warcraft and, and that's what and, he's, and, and and from that moment on he's just destroyed he, he stops playing world of warcraft which is his only source of status and, it, and, and he, he goes from being just, you know, just a basically a very hateful individual mm-hmm. to somebody who, who you would think is mentally ill. He starts yeah. telling a, a story about the world that, 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 that he says that, that women are the cause of all um, the evil in the world because mm-hmm. they choose um, to mate with jocks, you know, stupid, violent jocks. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and um, therefore they have stupid, violent jock children and and you know this is the cause of all the all the all the terrible things in the world when they really should be choosing him this glorious gentleman yeah yeah um and so his solution is to um kill all the women except for a few of them that he'll keep in some sort of laboratory or you know factory or something in which it'll be artificially inseminated to have children and sex will be abolished completely Mm -hmm. And, and you think you know when you're reading it you think Man, you've lost it now. You yeah. you know, you've literally yeah. got insane. This is like if yeah. somebody told you this story, they they think you're a crazy person. Yeah. Um, and yet, when you look at the story of the Second World War, it's it's hauntingly similar. Mm-hmm. An entire nation. Well, not this, it was going too far to say an entire nation, but you know, a large number of Germans started telling almost exactly that story about the Jews yeah. after the after the First World War, and so and. You know, and they did begin exterminating them as a race. Yeah. So, 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 and that really, when I realised that, that sent a real chill down my spine because suddenly, mm. Eddie Rogers isn't this like crazy outlier. I mean, he is an outlier, but but you, you think, well, his brain is just doing what brains do, and that's yeah. telling. That's when you know when we feel unfairly robbed of status, we tell an unbelievably toxic and hateful story about the, the people that we blame. Yeah, and that story can really, really take us to incredibly dark places. Yeah. So, yeah. So at at the risk of being both cheesy and controversial, here's a rant that I think that you'll understand because it's something I think about quite often. So on one hand, you have, uh, you have this kind of entitlement, right? Like I deserve these type of people to, you know, uh, women, these yeah. types of women should uh, desire me, right? But, you know, uh, something I, I, I learned from David Buss's recent book is the worst thing you could do is be like, on a scale of one to 10, be like a five and go after eights, right? Like, just don't do that. You got to date within your range. So, but there's this weird entitlement where people don't acknowledge that and they yeah. they lie to themselves and say, I, I should get better. And that that's that's insane, right? Um, and Kate Mann. That's the actually, grandiosity. That's exactly. the grandiosity. Yeah, that's and, not everybody. That's just some people. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Kate Mann in her book titled "Entitled," actually, she talked about Elliot Rogers, right? Oh. But then, on the other hand, here's my controversial slash cheesy side of it. I I remember the Parkland shooting when it happened and I looked at it, and when whenever stuff like this happens, I'm like, why, 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 why? I want to know a motive, like. By the way, at the time of recording this, there was a bomb threat like at the Capitol last week. And I still don't know the full reason why nobody's talking about it, but it's driving me nuts because I want to know why. I want to know the story behind it. But anyways, uh, the the kid from Parkland, you find out that there was like, uh, you know, all these kids who were bullying this guy for so long, right? And with, uh, you see this like temperature knob slowly being turned up. And I guess like my view on it is just, we got to be a little bit nicer, right? Because uh, because the bullying is a sign of status. I used to be a dick when I was in school. When I was in high school and stuff like that, I was an angry person and I had an alcoholic mom and a crappy family, so I bullied other people. But that was status. That was how I inflated myself, you know? But I was putting someone else down, causing humiliation or whatever. And the thing is, once somebody does something so horrible, like a mass shooting, it it feels like we can't even have that conversation anymore, right? Because they crossed the line so far that we can't talk about what led to it. Does that make sense? It feels like it's- Well, totally. Yeah, no, totally. And and, and I think that's the story. You know, we we tell a story about the world and it's a heroes and villains story and it's Mm. angels and demons. And, you know, that's one of the things that I've always done in in my books, which is, is try to- just put that to one side and not and, and try as far as possible to not morally judge people because I'm, I'm in no position to morally judge yeah, anybody. Right. And, you know, and, and, and you know, and I think you could probably, you know, pick up in that chapter about Elliot Rogers, you know, I have immense sympathy for him in a, in a, in a way because, 
Jesus, the things he went through were horrific. You know, he he was he he, he was he was probably an autistic kid, so he had problems um, uh, making social connections. He was bullied just remorselessly, and he, he, and and yeah, and, and you see, you know, status is a fundamental human human need. We need mm-hmm. it, and, and and if you and if you take anybody. Um, and, and put them through what Elliot Rogers w- went through. Yeah, they're not going to do what Elliot Rogers did. He, he, you know, he, he was a very rare combination of events. And as I say, the grandiosity is definitely a, a part of that. The narcissism. Yeah, that's really dangerous. Um, you know, male narcissistic humiliated is a bad combination. Um, but 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 you, you you're going to end up not with a you know a, a poor you know, a sad, um, sorry victim that you're going to find in a Disney movie, you're going yeah. to end up with an arsehole. Yeah. That you, you know, you're going to end up with an angry, probably extremely aggressive, antisocial prick that no one likes, because that's what happens. And, yeah. and, and you know, and, and, it's, and it's, it's because of what happens to these people. I mean, in, in the same way, you know, in, in, in the chapter about the Nazis, I, you know, d- decided that I, you can't, I couldn't not write about all the things that Hitler did yeah. that, that, that actually genuinely made people love him. And that wasn't to do with, you know, this, again, the story that we told about the Nazis, because when people cross a certain line, as you say, we, we go into this, we we'll go into this kind of cartoon framework of, oh, they're a monster. Yeah. Um, but, you know, of course, you know, Hitler was an unbeliever, did unbelievably evil things. Um, uh, but, but, but he, he, there was a reason that the, um, the, the, the Germans worshipped him like a god. And it wasn't because he was like a monster with, you know, amazing or powers of speech making or whatever you're told at school. Yeah. It's because Germany was, you know, humiliated after the First World War. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of people believed a story that, that the Jews were responsible for that is, you know, a completely made up false story. Um, but but and not only did, but he you know he, he yes he he t- you know he told that story though although not as much as you'd think during the 1930s yeah. but what he actually did was promise to restore the, the status of Germany and he did it you know he did it you know in in less than ten years he did yeah. it you know he took this abs- this country that was humiliated and fallen to pieces and achieved full employment and and it, you know and. and uh, if, the, the, the Treaty of Versailles, which was the, the, the source of uh, you know you know so much of that humiliation, he just he, he just um, r- rode roughshod on it with no apparent consequences. So yeah. that's the real reason that um, that people loved Hitler, but it's because he 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 gave the nation the status they felt you know, and I think it was quite a grandiose narcissistic nation yeah. Germany at the time. They, they, they were the leading, they, they were by far the most successful country in continental Europe and probably in, in all of Europe, including the UK, you know, before the First World War. So, so, so you know, you, you, ha- you have to, if you really want to find out what's going on, you've got, to, you've got to have the courage, I think, to push aside this urge to go, well, they're a monster. I don't want to understand them. Yeah. Because it doesn't get us anywhere. You, you're not going to prevent the next Elliot Rogers or the next Hitler by, 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 by doing that. You're going to yeah. prevent it by understanding what was the appeal of Hitler genuinely. It was that he, he promised anti-delivered status. I mean, unlike Trump, who promised status but didn't deliver it. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, what caused Elliot Rogers was was this, this unbelievably dangerous combination of narcissism and humiliation. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It's just like one of those things where you like you accidentally make a bomb right you take the wrong combination of (laughs) genetics and how they were raised and you know like you you put that all together and a certain experience and boom right but you know the the thing is it it feels like it feels like we have this human tendency to just want to simplify it as much as possible and forget the nuance and just we want to say you know these people are evil they were born different they were this is how they were because we want to believe that this couldn't happen regularly this couldn't happen or there's nothing i could do to cause somebody to you know or or play a small role you know what i mean it feels like a oversimplification but but humiliation you know it's that final ingredient and let me ask yeah. you something let me ask you something will because it's very rare that i have somebody else who used to be an alcoholic on here do you think because i i bet you could relate to this like humiliation, I already did all that shit, you know? <laughs> I've done so many things that I can't remember and people tell me about. So like, I'm not telling people to be an addict or an alcoholic, but do you think that prepared us a little bit better for dealing with humiliation? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I can only speak for myself. And, and, and yeah, I mean, humiliation is the big part of why I get quit it all. You know, it's that awful moment of waking up and just not knowing what you did and then looking at your phone and yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. shit looking at the text messages and oh my god yeah and, and so yeah yeah, yeah it, 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 but I, I don't know if that prepares me any better for yeah I, I just think humiliation is such a fundamentally dreadful experience it's, it's you know it's like suffering from starvation mm. you know it, 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 it's the opposite of what the the, the mind craves yeah so, so i don't know i can only speak for myself but i don't think it's, it's given me any kind of inoculation either. yeah no that's, <laughs> that's a good this. that's a good point like when i think about it I, it's just kind of like shifted right like there's there's yeah. certain aspects where like you know somebody might look at me and be like aren't you embarrassed and i'm like no like i've done way worse yeah. but there's well, other I, well, well, yeah, well, I, the, the, what it does do is it makes me much more empathetic towards other people, that you know, too. and I yeah. think that reflects in, 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 in the writing. I, 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 I don't often, I, you know, in, you know, judge other people in those ways. Like I'll look at an Elliot Roger and not think there's a monster. But I'll think, oh, yeah. God, you know. <laughs> You know, I I'll be much more. In, I I I have I have a high tolerance for bad people because I've yeah. been that person myself, and, exactly. and I'm not going to like cast them into the fire because yeah. I get I get I get why people act like pricks. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I did. Yeah. I, I've I've been reading books on like the justice system and everything like that, and just thinking, you know, just about like just because of my personal experience, I used to be a complete different person just angry terrible bad father bad son bad friend all those things and i've changed i'm a pretty decent guy now right so i see that in other people and i'm like okay well maybe these people can change if yeah. given the opportunity and that's kind of why i'm interested in the justice system and the talks around it and stuff because like i'm like hey if a guy like me because here's the thing like especially just me personally like i should have had so many DUIs, like driving under the influence here in Las Vegas. Like I just got lucky, right? So there's not, there's, there's not much aside from luck that separated me from a lot of other people who'd be considered bad on a lower level. So that's why, you know, I, I try not to morally judge people. Um, but, but yeah, I want, I want to ask you about a few just like situations. Now we talked about evolution and we're in 2021. And I want to hear your thoughts on how status plays into certain things that we're all dealing with right now. And I, I want to start with like QAnon and anti-vaxxers and conspiracy movements, <laughs> right? Because you touch on it a little bit in the book, but how does status play? And do people like try to outdo each other within those groups for status? Because there's a weird thing going on where it's like, is, are people trying to be like, hey, I have the craziest conspiracy theory. And is that a status thing, do you think? Yeah, I, I think one thing where, where it gets really interesting, this stuff is, is when you start looking about people's beliefs about the world. And, uh, you know, what the, what, what the brain wants is connection and status. It's not particularly bothered about, it's not motivated to find out what's true. It's motivated mm. to find out who do I have to be in order to connect and earn status. So, 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 so we're very vulnerable to um, um, believing any crazy shit if our status is, is dependent on it. And so in the book, I tell the story. I spoke to the, a young woman in Pennsylvania called Miranda Dinder who uh, was 18 years old and she was pregnant. Mm. All her friends were at college. Um, she uh, had been brought up in a family of women and was, uh, and you know, really was one of these people that loved the idea of powerful, strong, independent, you know, women. Um, uh, she uh, um, had the misfortune to find a, a, a midwife who was an anti-vaxxer and, and, and this is before, you know, COVID. Um, so th this midwife said, if you consider not vaccinating your kid and, and Miranda was like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what's mad? <laughs> and this woman said, oh, you should just Google it. You should just Google it. Um, so she Googled why not vaccinate. And of course the whole fucking internet blew up oh, in her yeah, face yeah. of all these reasons why not vaccinate. She's like, oh my God, this is horrific. You know, I never knew all this stuff. Um, and she joined a Facebook group and the, the, uh, and the Facebook group was, um, uh, I think it was called Great Mothers Questioning Vaccines, was mm. great, great Moms, Great Mothers Questioning Vaccines. And she said, you know, the experience is like I was suddenly surrounded by all these really amazing, strong, powerful women who, 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 who you know, mm. who, who were just like a model for me. 
Um, and and you know, and you know, she said she announced herself as vaccine hesitant, and they kind of you know just mobbed her on this group, really, telling, you know, encouraging her. And she she basically said, you know, you know, the, the, she she described a situation in which, of course, she wanted to be connected to these people. She 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 said it was like, um, imagine if you wanted to be a firefighter and you were a mm-hmm. kid, and your parents took you to the fire station. You saw these amazing firefighters, and you're like, oh my god, I want to be just yeah. like these people. Yeah. That's how it felt, you know. So 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 she did, and, and and that's what we do, and that's that's backed up by huge amounts of research in you know in psychology anthropology. You know, we, we, we humans copy people. We, yeah. we don't just copy. We don't just copy anyone. We copy people that we um, look up to. That, that are that, you know, we, we're playing a sta- in a status game with these people, and and we're like, I want to be like that person. So we start yeah. mimicking them. We start, you know, even the way they dress, their tastes in art, the, the way they talk. Um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I used to was obsessed with this um, pop star called Nick Kershaw, and and mm. I saw Nick Kershaw on breakfast TV and he, and he crossed his leg in this funny way with his ankle on his knee. And I started doing that. And, it, you know, I was like eight years old. It's just it's just a natural thing that you do. And, yeah. and, and one of the things you do is you copy the beliefs. And so she started believing this thing. And then she said, you know, the way that you actually earn status and rank in this group was that you went out and evangelized the belief. So yeah. you'd go out into the world, and you'd lecture your cousins, you'd lecture your doctor, <laughs> and you'd, you know, have arguments. Then you'd come back to the group, you'd type it all in and everybody would go, oh, yeah, way to go, mom. And, you know, so so it was it was a classic status game. And, and, and the, the way that you earn status and, you know, secured your connection was by being useful to the group was by, was yeah. by going out there and, and, I, and I think that becomes really dangerous for people who because you can imagine somebody like Miranda you know she's isolated she's in Pennsylvania all her friends are at college this this could, could easily become your main source of status mm-hmm. so, so, so you, you know you have all these different sources of status in, in you know and we designed to get status of the people we actually spend our lives with but now we've got the internet and actually, yeah. you can become somebody really important on the internet mm-hmm. um, for for acting in a certain way. And, yeah. and if all your and it, and it, and if your your major source of status is this internet persona you've got, you're in a very dangerous place. If if yeah. if, it, if that persona depends on adherence to a belief, because you ain't going to give that belief up, not very yeah. easily. Yeah, and and just you know, even thinking about that, and you like you know that that Facebook group of anti vaxxers but we saw this rise of QAnon during the pandemic. But like when you know, I I've watched several documentaries and read some books on QAnon, and you often find that a lot of these people were isolated, alone, not really someone huge, you know, in their community or whatever. But like you said, online you can yeah. be you can well, be someone. Totally. And, and, and you can imagine during the when they when they kind of storm the White House, these mm-hmm. people just from, you know, have, from ordinary lives in ordinary places all over America. In that, on that day when they stormed the White House, they were Tom Cruise. They were literally saving America and saving oh, yeah. the free world. And, you know, like that is status, you know, that they really thought they were superheroes that day. Yeah, um, and so, so 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 yeah, you know, it's it's very once you once you sort of see the status dynamics in, in in all this stuff, it's very hard to unsee it. Yeah, you know. So I I, I have a dumb question for you, but I want to make a point for everybody listening to this this episode. So with everything we're talking about, like anti vaxxers you know, QAnon and stuff like that, do you see similar causes with outrage culture? Right, like who can get the most mad about something so morally stupid and insignificant, yeah. right? Like, oh, I can't believe this person said this. Like, yeah. do you see that same thing? So they can go back and say, oh, I freaked out on this person more than anything, right? Do you think that's happening as well with outrage oh, totally. culture? Yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, I mean, that that's what outrage culture is all about. It's it's a status game, and it's 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 you know, it's it's um it's about you know people kind of form groups around uh you know political ideas on the internet and um you know within these groups there are high status kind of warriors who yeah. uh, you know they, they could be journalists or columnists or politicians or you know celebrities often as well and uh, and yeah uh, and you know sometimes you know I, I, in the book there's two british actors you know there's jamila jamil um who was in yeah. the place yeah and and lawrence fox um, uh, you know, she's on the left, he's on the right, and and, and they're both. I mean, in the, in the UK, it's no. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say they're now more famous for their internet warrior kind of behaviour than mm-hmm. they are for actual acting. You know, their main source of status is for Jamila Jamil. It's for being this body 
positivity kind of activist you know she, yeah. she's very interested in um in 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 appearance uh, and uh, you know she, she's attacked numerous women um online mm-hmm. um and you know lawrence fox is is this kind of anti-woke kind of warrior that that, that kind of that, that kind of attacks people that he perceives as being um you know too 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 left-wing in their thinking yeah and and, and you can see that they you know yeah it's, 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 it's so and, and you know and, and you know they, they've all got these sort of groups of people that follow them on on twitter and and, and if they say something then they all mob against the the person yeah. they're complaining about and yeah i mean it's, it's just classic status game behavior yeah. you know yeah. and 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 it's interesting when you see you know, in the book i kind of just you know went on the way back machine and i was interested to, and you see that the, if, from the moment they they started doing this online Twitter, you know, warring, their social media followers just you know, counts, just rocket up, yeah. upwards, you know. So they're, they're earning huge amounts of um, status um, doing this. Yeah. So I, I, I have a few more questions for you, but I, got, I have another quick rant to go on, right? So like yeah. earlier we were talking about how, you know, people are profiting off of this and, you know, corporations and companies and, you know, status and, you know, we want to move up the corporate ladder. But on this like social status level, like what you're talking about, like, like, yeah, I do that too. Like I look back and, and humans, we, our actions are largely based on incentives, right? And we do what gives us rewards. So if you say something, right, like you could, you could start out with something soft and just be like, hey, body positivity. And people are like, yeah, but you're like, oh, wait, well, what if I turn that heat up a little? And then people are like, yeah. So then it gets to a point where I'm looking at these people and I feel again, like it's this sleight of hand. I'm like, do these people even believe it anymore someone like a Jamila or you know other there's there's endless I'm like do they even believe it anymore or is it do they keep that going just to keep their status and do all of their followers not see that because now they're motivated not only for the status but sometimes there's you know even profit incentives and profit motives like there's there's people on tv or you know whoever where because of their personality because they do that they're like the leader of this tribe that gets angry about stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I'm inclined to tend to the, towards the less cynical view. I think they do believe <laughs> it. You know, I really do. Really? I, I think I think that when when you're looking from a distance and, and seeing them, it's very easy to believe. Mm. You, think, you can't possibly believe that, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that's it's usually what I'm thinking. That you believe that, uh, but, but 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 most of the time, I'm sure there are cynical people out there. But I think if if you were really cynical, you would lose energy and momentum in it. I, you know, I I I think it's very. I I don't, I, I don't underestimate the power of human irrationality when mm. you know when, when when status is in play. I mean, you know, there, there there are billions of people around the world who have religious beliefs. Literally billions of people who have religious beliefs. Yeah. Religion is a status game, and you know, mm. and you know, so so, so it, 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 it is the norm to believe magic, supernatural, irrational things. Yeah. If you, the, your connection into a group and your status depends on it, that's the norm. It's not a, a rare thing. If you look at the uh, religious yeah. belief, it's the norm. So, 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 yeah, you know, I really, I really think they do believe it. And, and that's not to say that it doesn't all fall to pieces around their heads at some point, which, 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 which it may well do. Yeah. But you know, like, like, um, what I don't, I don't write about it in the book, but, it, but it's always fascinated me. Uh, from the European perspective to look at the experience of Germany, East Germany, you know, you know, the East Germany in the 20th century went from being Nazis to communists. (laughs) And these are the same people (laughs) having the same life. And some of the people that were in the Gestapo ended up being in the Stasi. And, you know, so, so, so so that, you know, and it's obviously not as simple as that they were all Nazis and they were all communists. It's not everybody. Um, but 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 you know a sizable number of East Germans you know who, who embraced Nazism then went on to embrace communism like the opposite yeah. know, uh, point of view because that was the status game then and, 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 and so so that shows you you know that, that that's a, you know, that shows you kind of how malleable kind of people can be and how yeah. h- how vulnerable people can be to these um kind of the, the, these kind of um, uh, stories that that, that that you adopt in order to kind of feel good about yourself. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, Will, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here to balance me out. Cause I like your, your view better because yeah, when I'm looking at, I'm like, I'm like, you don't really believe that because this is happening, like the world's going to end. Right. Like there's no way you can actually believe, but, but yeah, like, uh, you know, our, our brains, like self-deception is very real. Yeah. Right? I mean, look, at the, look at the COVID pandemic. I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I've been writing about irrationality for, for, for years now. And even yeah. I was thinking, well, once, once it'd be interesting with COVID because it will get rid of anti-vax. But it hasn't got rid of anti Oh, no. Uh, just today, um, a bunch of protesters were storming um, you know, a TV channel, a national TV channel in London. You know, so that these people are literally surrounded by suffering and death on a mass scale. Yeah. And they, they are not only believing the anti-vax conspiracy theories, they're believing it to such an extent they're storming TV stations yeah. and attacking people. So, you know, that, that is the power of it. And, you know, it's not most people, but, but it's, a lot, it's, it's more people than it should be. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, that's, I think that's why I enjoy your work, because I'm fascinated by irrationality. Like, like we, we were talking about the January 6th uh, storming of the Capitol that was all based on something that had zero evidence of, of yeah. voter fraud and it's like you guys believe this so much that you like people got in cars and drove across country people got in planes they bought plane tickets got a hotel room and then they stormed like the, all yeah. the steps they took for believing something without evidence and I'm, I'm just constantly really fascinated by that whole thing but but yeah so I want to I want to end with a couple positive questions for you Will. So okay. I'm, I'm hoping to learn from you since you just wrote an entire book on status and stuff like, I'm curious, like, how, how is this experience writing this book? How has it changed how you view status? And like, does it help you like, I don't know, navigate a little bit more and just yeah, not- so, 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 so it, it helps. It, it, the, one thing it does is it helps kind of ground you because all of us, and I'm definitely obviously no exception, are vulnerable to when we feel that our status has been attacked unfairly, you spiral into these kind of weird stories. Oh, it's all a plot against me. You know, it's yeah. not fair. And, and and I catch myself doing that much more now. So, so hopefully I'm less, you know, and, 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 but, but the process is so hard. You can catch yourself at it, but it still feels like it's true. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you still think it must be true, um, but but it isn't. So so there is that. But but also I, th I think it you know it does make me more kind of empathetic to, to other people because you you know it's understanding that I think before I went into this project the way you see status is is, is this kind of slightly dirty grubby thing that kind of losers and egotists are interested in and actually mm -hmm. you know good people aren't worried about that kind of thing yeah. it's absolute nonsense it's rubbish you know it, it, yeah. it's, it's 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 just it's just not true and, and so and, and, and so that does that that does give you a lot of empathy for for, for the other side for, for their irrationality for their anger mm -hmm. um you know as you're saying you know for people like Elliot Rogers or you know who, who, you know these the, these people who, who do terrible things I think anything that gives you a, a kind of a deeper understanding into why people end up doing terrible things that's got to be a good thing I think yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy because uh, you know, just I, I remember just for a long time I was this huge advocate of like, hey, just quit caring what other people think, right? And then like when I had the internet coming after me and I was spiraling out of control, I wanted to like relapse, right? And I'm just like, what's going on? And and now I cut myself some slack because I'm like, this is like wired inside of me. Yeah, you know, like you're is. talking like yeah. so yeah. so we can acknowledge it and try to fight it, but it is. It's like trying to fight against like the, a wave that's coming at you. Well, like, you can't do it because it's the way you're experiencing the world. I mean, you know, like uh, there, was, uh, there was this funny study that I wrote about in the book where, you know, because some people meditate because they, they they want to destroy the ego, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they, they did a study of 3,700 people who, 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 who meditated specifically to get rid of their desire for status. And they found that they measured really high in what was called spiritual superiority. <laughs> so they're all walking around going, if only the rest of the world was like me, the world would be a better place. And it's like, yeah. you know, the fact is that you don't really, you know, people who meditate a lot feel, they think that they feel really good about themselves. They think they're better than you because they, yeah. you know, because they do it. So you can't, you can't get rid of it because it's, it's how we experience the world. And yeah. the only people that really try yeah. are the hikikomori in Japan and, and they ain't happy. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, just even something similar that comes to mind is when I got sober and I was introduced to, you know, 12 step rooms and like, you know, they, they, they try to uh, uh, not have the status 
too, mm-hmm. right? But but it's it's part of me. Like when I walked in there, I'm like, oh, this guy's been sober longer, right? Uh, oh, that person's not been sober as long, and we're just constantly sizing yeah. up. But and they're competing over who did the worst thing. Oh yeah, yeah, the worst oh, stories. I killed and three all people. I killed seven people. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I got sober in a yeah. sober living house. So just all the newly sober people really? just talking about all. Oh, well, I sniffed this off of that, and you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's crazy because we'll even fight for status of who did the worst thing, exactly. which is yeah. which is also yeah. nuts. But um. Yeah. So, so this, this, I, I hope we can simplify this because I can see this being like a a whole nother episode, but so that on an individual level, you know, how this has kind of helped you, but like, how do you think like just society, culture, government can do better? Like, for example, for example, when I think about all this, the status game and, you know, jobs and everything, like I, I keep trying to find somebody who can argue, who can make who can make me believe that capitalism is just the best system, right? But it seems like it it just amplifies the status game. And one of the one of the common you know arguments is, well, if we get rid of money incentives, people will no longer innovate. And I'm like, well, that's bullshit because we're always seeking status. So even if we were all on the level playing field, we'd still want to do better than other people, totally, you know? Yeah. So I'm curious, I'm sure this has crossed your mind. Like, do you have any thoughts on like a starting place for just how, if, if you, you start a country tomorrow, you start will store yeah. country, right? What's the system you set up to kind of avoid these status conflicts? Well, you're not going to avoid the status. So the, uh, the trick is to, the trick is to, um, is, is, is to arrange the, the, the status games in such a way that it benefits everybody ah. so 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 you know in the book i write about um the virtue game and the success game and, and what kind of defines modernity is that is that we, we is that since the industrial revolution you know we, we play success games much more now so we, we award status on the basis of competence um mm-hmm. you know uh, much more than we're used to um for thousands of years so, so uh, you know and that and that you know it, it, it's like anything it's not a, a all good or all bad it's a trade-off but but it, but it's really good when you award status for competence in terms of fighting diseases, um, you know, in creating technology. It makes you know uh, it, it makes the world a kind of vastly better place. Yeah, I think uh, you know I, I think uh, you know th- there is no perfect system, but I think the best system that, that we've had that that, that that we that we've come upon so far is is the, is what you might call you know, neoliberalism with cushions. I, th- I think neoliberalism mm. this 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 heightened very very competitive form of of capitalism that we've been living in the midst of since the 1980s Uh, you know we've seen wealth grow through the 1980s but 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 it needs more cushions you know those white working class people who have suffered through during neoliberalism they need help um Mm -hmm. you know people um um are born with low IQs, with with with, with yeah. antisocial personalities. They need help because they fail for, for, for reasons that are not their own, that not their fault. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, so so you know, uh, you, you know, I, I tend towards a Scandinavian model because they have capitalism. Me too. With, yeah. But with right? cushions, and, yeah. and, you know, just today on Twitter, they, they, uh, a kind of atlas of happiness um, uh, w- was published, and I, and I which I retweeted because I thought it was very interesting. The happiest places were the Western places with capitalism, but the happiest places were the Scandinavian places where they seem to have the best of all worlds over there. Yeah. So, 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 so you know, like, like you know, th- there is no perfect system, but but I think the Scandinavians have got it best. You know, they they, they they've got that they, they they've got competition, but but they use a lot of its rewards to to take care of the people who are less able to compete. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I love that. Yeah, when I look, because it's not about like, we're, you know, perfection is this thing we're never going to achieve. But it's like, I think we can nudge a little bit closer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. we can get a little bit yeah. closer. But yeah, Will, thank you so much for your time. And Will, honestly, the book was so amazing. I have like, two more pages of notes for topics we didn't even get to touch on so so i hope everybody goes out gets the book at the time we're releasing this the book's out but can you let everybody know where they can find the book and where they can find you because you're you you are a writing machine so where can people (laughs) keep up to date with uh Um, best thing is twitter um which is just at w store s-t-o-r-r and yeah the 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 book is um the book is out september 2nd it's on amazon and everywhere else where you usually find um books yeah. Beautiful. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Will. And we'll we'll do this again sometime because I'm sure you'll yeah, be definitely. cranking out more books. Thanks, Chris.